was ones. So, today we are going to chat what happens when I try to factor something and I can't find numbers that work. So, for instance, normally we would look at this first problem here and say, okay, I got this, Hardy. So, this is C, this is B. I'm going to make two sets of parentheses. And I'm going to go looking. And so I get here and I'm like, wait a minute, something's not right. Because normally if I go to factor something and I take my C value and I look at it in the chart, I find a pair of numbers that I can add or subtract to get the number in the middle. Well, I can't make 1 in 61 turn into 16. So what the heck? So we have to have another option if factoring doesn't work. And that's what we're going to chat about today. So what are we going to do if that happens? Well, let's see what's going on up here. If needed, move the constant term. You're like, okay, Hardy, what, what's the constant term? The constant term is the plain old number. Okay, we, we called it C before, right there. To the other side and add blanks. Okay. So what does that mean? So here, our goal is I only want stuff with X on the left side at the beginning. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do X squared minus 16X, and I'm going to add a blank. I'll explain what the blank is here momentarily. Okay. Yup. And then on the other side, 0 minus 61 is negative 61. And I'm going to add a blank over there, too. Because remember, in math, if we're doing equation stuff, whatever I do to one side, I have to do both. And we're going to do a little adding of a number here. But I'll explain where that comes from. Okay. Fill in the blanks with the number that makes the left side a perfect squared trinomial. Okay, let's simplify that. We're going to take your B value, okay? My B is negative 16, a little side work here. We're going to divide that by 2 in parentheses, and we're going to square it. I'm, go I'm going to show you. Well, that's why you just got to kind of watch and be amazed here. So negative 16 divided by 2. I mean, you even could, if you didn't want to do all the stuff with parentheses and things, you can do negative 16 divided by 2, but then you'd have to do that squared. I mean, it's two steps, but either way. Okay, that's the magic blank number. Why, Hardy, is that the magic blank number? Let me tell you why. So now... This is a perfect square trinomial. You're like, okay, so if we remember back to last unit, if your first and last terms are both perfect squares, x and 8, we may have to, you know what, I think we do. I think we need to bust that back out. I'm going to write that at the top here. We're going to need our perfect squares so we can remember how this works. So just a moment. Let me let me get these so we can add them in. I'm going to do this up to 10. I think that should get us in pretty good shape here. Okay, these are the numbers that are going to end up showing up in the blanks. And then the numbers I'm putting in below here You'll see what's going to happen with those here in a minute. I'm going to put a set of parentheses next to that. So you're like, okay, now kind of quick synopsis, Hardy. What have you done here again? Because there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Job number one, get your X's on a side by themselves with a blank. 
whatever, if I had to move something to the other side, gets the same blank. It's the blank. Okay, we got our little formula over here. We're going to take the number in front of x, your b value, labeling it, probably a good idea. We're going to divide it by 2, it's the same every time, it should be negative 8, and we're going to square it, whatever that number is, and it will always be positive. We're going to put in the blank on both sides, and that's kind of where we're at now. So once I've got that, I'm even going to teach you a trick on doing this next part that's going to make this go faster. Just watch and be ready. So here, x, what's negative 16 divided by 2? Negative 8. So now I probably at this point have also mind blown some of you like, wait. Okay, so two things I've heard. What's up with the 3? What's up with the 8 under the 64? Okay? Whatever the square root of this is, is what this number is going to be. The square root of 64 is 8. Okay? When I added the 64 over here, negative 61 plus 4 is where the 3 is coming from. Okay? So if... You're trying to find a quick way to get this part when you're here. All you've really got to do, hint, hint, is take that B value and divide it by 2. Negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. That's what's going to go in the parentheses. That's not going to change. Because once I get to this step, we've done this already. We've done the part where we're trying to solve for x, and we've got a squared... That's what we did here. I'm going to pull that back up in a minute. And we did the plus minus thing. Well, that's the same thing I'm going to do on this problem. I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to do my square root. Squared and square root are opposites. And we're going to do plus minus on this side. Let's see, square root of 3. I don't think that's going to be nice. Again, that's just second and x squared to get my square root. There's a little square root right there. And just like we did before, last step, we're going to break this up into two. We're going to do one where it's positive 1.73. Because, again, there's two answers. The other one we're going to do where it's negative 1.73. Yeah. Just added the negative 61 that was already over here and the plus 64 from my blank and added them up. So, as you can see, getting decimals is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes we're going to get whole numbers. Sometimes we're going to get really funky decimals. I'm even going to make sure I do this one right. Oops. i got to type it in right, though. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Dang, Hardy, there's a lot to this. Once we get a couple of things situated, these are going to move faster. But we got to get through the first part before we can get to the faster part. So, okay, let's, let's play with another, and I'm going to jump in on some of the practice ones and help, too. We're going to take our time. They do. Okay. If, okay, we want to make sure, the first step, I always call my X's a lone step. If your x's are alone on one side already, like this time the 50's on the other side of the equals, this is what we hope for because that's one less thing to do. So we're going to put a blank on the x's side. The 50's already over here, so we're going to leave that alone. So reminder of how we're doing the blank, and I'm going to write it out again but if you can do this in your head or somewhere else, that's fine. It's not going to be a bad thing. So 
So here's B. Okay. Roy's going to take your B value. We're going to divide it by 2. We're just using this formula right here. And we're going to square it. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. That's going to be the magic number. Half of this number, square it every time. If you could just do that in your head, that's fine. If not, that's okay too. But here's the speedy part. What's, what's half a positive 14? Seven. Seven. Notice I didn't even have to do the other little Q part down here. If you just take the number in the middle with X and cut it in half, negative 16 divided by 2, negative 8. Positive 14 divided by 2, 7. That part's going to be done for you already. You're not going to have to spend a lot of time there doing your work. So you get to here. And this, again, is like what we've been up to for the past couple of days. So the square root will cancel the squared. That's a good question. Let's see. Second x squared, 9.495. I'm good with either. Like, don't make it 10, but if you go to one decimal or two decimal places, that's fine. Oops, I almost forgot the important part. I got plus minus here. Yeah. So we're going to split her into two. So positive for one, negative for the other. And now we're just doing one step equation. There it is. It's like anything else. The more we get used to it, the easier it's going to become. As we're going. Thank you. So note-wise, we're good. If there's parts that you haven't gotten, again, get those and we'll, we'll get those posted to classroom later, but we'll also get them frozen on the screen if we need those as we go. So this is where we're going to dive in with the sheet that you picked up, hopefully on the way in because, even though we're gonna be using this, okay, 5A, how I missed this, I have no idea. So I wanna do one of each type again so we can kinda of see how this works. In the part up top, let me fold this over. On these first three, they're like our second example because the X's are already by themselves, which is our first step always. So if that's ready to go, we're ready for our blanks right away. And just like we saw before, whether you do the little side work or not, we're going to take our B value, we're going to take our 2, we're going to divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2, last I checked, is 1. And we're going to square it. Always positive numbers into the blanks. Once we've got our blanks filled, Remember the shortcut for the left side here. Just take that B value, positive 2, divide it by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. If you did your side work, you even got it right there. And just that quick, we're all ready to the stuff we've been doing. My next job is to get rid of the squared. See ya. Uh, 
let's see. Six is not a perfect square. I know that much. 2.45. And now we're just ready to split it up and do our one step equations. So one gets positive 2.45. One gets negative 2.45 minus the one. And minus the one. A little bit longer than some of the problems we've normally done, yes, but the math isn't bad once you get that first couple of steps down. And so, let's see here. Let me find one that looks a little bigger. Uh, eight looks a little bigger. And I also want to see, yep, and that's the other thing I wanted to see. So if we move down to eight, now eight, when we get down here, let me make one more note before I do that. These are all like example number one, once we get to the bottom of the page here. So the difference now is, when I get down to the bottom of the page, my x's are not alone yet, and they need to be. So whatever I gotta do to get that done is my first step. But once I do that, it's blank time. Same rules. Whatever my B number is, we divide that by two. And we square it. So the B value itself can be negative. But when I do the squaring part, which goes in my blank, that's always going to be positive. Again here, keep life simple. Take negative 20, divide it by two. If you did side work, it'll be what you did here when you actually did negative 20 divided by two and then squared it. It's always gonna be the same number. That usually for people is the trickiest part. Cancel those out. Uh, square root of 54. 7.35, and we're into divide and conquer mode. Not literally dividing, but one with positive in my answer, one with negative in my answer. Add my 10 over. I do have answers at the bottom to check, which is nice. Add 10 over. Same process every time. No twists, no turns, nothing crazy. Just dividing through and going. And I thought it would be appropriate as we're cleaning up this one. So the front is all of our new stuff from today. The back, for those of you that had some struggles on the quiz, hey, here's another chance to kind of catch it again and see what's going on and hopefully be able to clean some stuff up as you're, as you're working back through some things. So let's see, Hardy's looking around. Um, bump, ba -da bump. Um, we'll, tr we'll try out these three just to kind of give you another little another little help reminder here and I'm going to pull out my notes for this I know this isn't what we were doing today but this is going to help when I'm doing these these are the numbers or if you have your multiplication chart that would work too you could look actually I will pull out my multiplication chart so there's 32 
I'm looking for a number in here that's one of my perfect squares, but the bigger the better. So I'm like, ooh, there's four, but wait a minute. I keep looking. There's 16. So I'm going to use 16 and 2. One of these has to be a perfect square. I can't just do like, ooh, I'm going to do, oh, I'm trying to think of another idea. Because 8 and 4 still has a square in it. But you've got to find things that have a perfect square. Break down the one that's perfect. And you're set. N not bad. But it's got to be the perfect square that breaks down. It's not the 2. And I'm doing that same thing over here. If they're the same, I can just add them. But if they're not, I'm going to go to 75 in my chart. And bless you. And again, I'm looking for a perfect square. Now, if I just listed them on my paper, I have a list of them here. If I needed to look, see the 25 there. So there's the 25. So 25 and 3. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 3. That, that's that's as small as it gets. Because I can't break down 3. 3 and 1, and not really helpful. And these are the same. Same radical. Just follow what we're doing in fun. And we're good. We're going to play that through. So last one. And just kind of making note again of the difference, these adding, we can only put them together if these are the same, the radicals. If we're multiplying, we don't have to do that. We can multiply the numbers in front. We can multiply the numbers underneath. Now, if this were a quiz question, you'd have half credit already. You're showing me you understand the idea, but... If I pull out 12, I notice there's a perfect square that's a factor. So if I do 3 and 4 with this, the square root of 4 is 2. So there's 45 still hanging out here. But then we got 2 times the square root of 3. And we multiply those together. If you've got Oh, you're okay. You're back at completing the square. I thought we were talking about this for a minute. I'm like, wait, what? Okay, so is what you're asking, is your blank always going to be positive? Yeah. Yes. Because no even matter... Even yeah. Even if the B is negative, this can be negative still when you get to the parentheses. But this, we're always putting this number in parentheses. So whether it's positive or whether it's negative, the number that's going to go in the blank is always positive. Otherwise, it messes life up. Oh. 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 Oh, I got, well, okay. So no, that shouldn't be a six, but you're right. Good catch. There should be a six there though, because there's one in the original problem. This is my five and square. Oh dear. Oh dear. So six times five is 30. Red, red being put in for the flushing of Hardy's face that he realizes that he completely forgot about the coefficient there. It is the same idea, but yeah, the answer is a whole lot bigger than what I had it. Thank you. Good catch. So what I'll do as this one's wrapping up, and I will get these notes and the ones from the past couple of days posted on Classroom, I'm going to...